motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings and peace, family. Welcome to uh, the next episode here with the queendome.com. We are continuing with the quantum manifestation. We are on part number three. So um, not sure how many parts this is going to be. Could be uh, five or six. So anyways, um, before we get started, before we continue here, let's get into the present moment. Let's get into the present moment awareness. So we're going to take a couple of deep breaths here and uh, get ourselves centered to get ourselves focused right into the present moment. So here we go. All right, breath work is always awesome. Hopefully you're doing this practice throughout the day and uh, you're starting your, your day with it and ending your night with it. It's really um, a great way to uh, get focused, hone in, uh, and to uh, start a great meditative practice. All right, so uh, we're um, with the article, the Energetic Institute out of Australia. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Principally, we must transform ourselves from being unconscious to more fully conscious if we are to take control of our reality. This is firstly a process of overcoming our inward loop distortions, obstacles, and reactive victim thinking, where we often refuse to take responsibility for our lives. From a place of responsibility, there are techniques and processes, as well as mindful realities that one needs to adopt to go from the victim who describes the world that they see towards a person who sees the world they describe. One goes from a victim to one who manifests, from a fate to a destiny, from unconscious to conscious life. The word projection is critical here. The processes and the act of projection is a big part of the illusion that we create for ourselves. The outbound part of the loop of connecting our minds with an object involves projection from us onto the object. If our mind creates the first movement in this loop and our sense awareness then receive the object in the next moment, then once the mind has processed that sense awareness input, retrieved internal body-mind database of information about the object. We now have within our human condition such energy states as discrimination, awareness, feeling, judgment, and other information, latent conscious mental factors up and running. <clears throat> Critically, in the next moment, we actually project much of that extra information back out onto the object by our mind regardless of the fact that this information did not come from the object but came from within us and the fact that this information can be very distorted. When the object gets all this projected upon it, then in the next moment we make an even worse unconscious action. We reread through all our incoming sense awareness, not only the original naked object information from the object out there, but we recycle all the projected extra information back inside us again as objective input from the object. This is the basis for ignorance and suffering. The problem is we unconsciously believe that all this information exists from the side of the object and do not even see how we are recycling our own stuff after having projected extra information back onto the object in our discrimination processes. This is a vicious cycle that continues as long as we continue to engage with the object. 
it um, doubly f uh, fools us as the extra information originally came from our own internal body-mind database. When we receive it again unconsciously and without knowing it, it maps directly to what we believe we know about sub, sub, such objects. And our internal body-mind object database confirms this and we reinforce our beliefs about this object from a false place. This is what creates self-sustaining patterns of behavior based on belief that all encounters with similar object give feedback consistent with all previous experiences of that same object. In therapy, one hears absolute statements such as, all men are bastards, all dogs look dangerous, all spiders are scary and make me freeze. If that was the end of the endless reality loop of information, receipt and projection onto objects that we engage in, that would be bad enough. But consider this, such repeated and sustained experiences create ingrained defenses, defenses in us to ward off experiencing negative experiences with such objects in the future. Over time, this in itself becomes unconscious and even shows up as chronic somatis, uh, somatization in the body. The body being part of the body-mind will show a manifestation of that negative defense in the body via postures, muscular development, energy disposition in the body, and eventually states of health. Refer to the char characterology section of this website for six separate articles on this body-mind science. Our physical reality modifies itself to ward off the challenges we believe lie out there. The big trick, or big lie, is we are actually creating the basis for attracting these same negative experiences toward us as a lifetime pattern due to the way in which mind creates all the objects in its personal reality. The rationale is that if our mind creates the object we encounter out there, then it creates the very experiences we have with those objects as well. This is because apart from the first moment when intention is the primary waveform, energy that creates the probable object from the energy cloud of all infinite possibilities. From then on, our perception of our stuff subtly changes the characteristics of that object first perceived. So if we see a person who we name as being a man, then depending on what our internal body-mind database holds as information about men, the next moment subtly changes the man object to a bastard man object unsafe or abusing man object, alcoholic man object, etc. How does this come about beyond the projection we spoke about earlier? Think of it like this. Part of our internal database information is the equivalent of a conclusion about the nature of that type of object. If the, conclu if the conclusion has a negative emotionally charged energy state, we will at some level have a defense against it. For example, by having a defense against bad men objects, we create the basis in the brain to activate a hypervigilance in the bodily, autonomic, and central nervous system to scan and detect these externally to us. The rear two sections of the brain, the primitive, amphibian, and the limbic parts of the brain are noted as controlling our body-mind database, which includes primitive fear and anger states. This is wired into the body-mind via the autonomic nervous system sympathetic mode and via neurochemical pathways of neuropeptides and receptor molecules. This process can create the basis for a person becoming addicted to emotional states. The defense in the body includes whichever emotional energy it is wired to and can have an unfortunate effect. It turns you into a huge energy transmitter of that negative waveform energy co-joined or mixed with the information or thought energy about the object triggering, triggering you. So maybe you transmit a mix of negative emotional states of fear, plus additional internal body-mind information, conclusion that all men rip me off. The net effect is that this becomes your unconscious intention in the next moment. And you then create the basis to pop from the infinite possible combination of men out there, one you fear, and one who eventually rips you off. Remember, reality is subjective. Whether you really need to fear that man or whatever he really rips you off is subjective. He may be someone to fear and he may rip you off. Or you may just project your fears onto him and end up having a distorted belief that he ripped you off. 
It does not matter. All that matters is that reality delivers to your stated but unconscious intention that you transmit from your energy field. This is the basis of what we call self-sabotage in therapy. We set ourselves up to get disappointed, to get betrayed, used, or abused, or to fail, but fail to see how we create this. Instead, become victims and then see the world and others out there doing it to us or doing us over. We feel powerless and victimized in this, in this place. The universe is neutral. You can have it all or you can have nothing. It's up to you. The universe has no favorites. It merely delivers to you what you request of it. So regardless of whether you do that unconsciously or consciously in every single moment, the universal law of attraction does not seem to recognize one's attitude to an object, just the object itself. By this I mean that if you wish for an object or an experience to happen, then it is the focus on the object and not the positive feeling that creates the object. Likewise, if one wishes to avoid an object of experience and thinks in this negative way, then one still attracts the object because it is the object focus that counts and not the feeling toward the object. Your mind creates your reality and you are the creator of your subjective reality and no one else. Theology states that God is within you from this co-creator perspective. The only fact is that which you create, and you are only a victim because you are ignorant and cause of, and of cause and effect, which is one of the seven laws of the Hermetic text, Tehuti, cause and effect. It is not a willful process. If you are already create now in every moment without needing to engage in willfulness, what one can do is make this whole process conscious and give it focus and intention. Now, this is both a conscious intention, setting and letting go, an act of faith rather than will, and surrender to this whole creative process and cycle, and a constant returning based on an observance effects from what manifests out there in our world, the timing of the object manifesting in front of us has personally more to do with the power of positive intention versus its polar opposite power of negative int intention or negative pleasure, as is also known. Quantum physics states that this known law will also interact and also influence the final outcome, so external factors also play a key role. This is not widely talked about in the New Age explanations of manifestation, but quantum physics acknowledge a number of influences, dynamics, and laws that operate within the realm of an object popping into part particle reality from the quantum field. The mind or observer effect is important, but not the only driver, but is the factor within our control. All of us have a momentum in this, and previous lifetimes, if you believe in reincarnation, that propels our body-mind forward in a time-space continuum. That momentum contains negative and positive energy, states within our body-mind object due to our illusion of duality. The illusion of the separate in here, or I, reality, and the out there, or you, duality. Duality means dual reality. Any positive intention causes an equal and opposite negative intention to arise, whether they both occur, occur in consciousness or whether the positive intention occurs in consciousness and the negative intention occurs in unconsciousness is not important. All occur in the body-mind container of our human condition. The key to stepping into the creator archetype is a fourfold for most of us. The key disciplines outlined below are those which work on number one, empowering our energetic container of self. Number two, relaxing the body-mind component. Three, those which clean up distortions in the reality loop we have been describing. And then four, the visualization or intention process which activates the probability component of the quantum collapse of waveform into particle form reality. All right, so let's, let's, let's break this down. <clears throat> now, what this is basically, you know, continuing to talk about is how powerful your thoughts are, how powerful your mind is, and how you have the ability to create. Uh, most people, they don't, they don't, they're not aware that they are creating every single step, every single moment, every single second of their lives. They feel like it's something outside of them that's controlling the strings, when in reality it's actually you. It's actually us. So now, 
if if you are you know wanting to really be uh intentful about your life um i mean really 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 intentful <laughs> about your life then you'll you'll want to dig into um the knowledge of metacognition metacognition is basically just just to study one's own thoughts right to study one's own thoughts because our thoughts are the primal factor of what we create it is our thoughts thoughts are things right so in each moment you know uh, you'll get to a point you know some people they say you know what i'm not going to sit around here and think about what i'm thinking about all the time all right well have a haphazard life you know but if you are again wanting to be uh intentional about your life you're wanting uh to create a certain type of life you're wanting to create a certain type of environment around you a uh, certain type of feelings emotions unconditional love peace joy happiness all of these great high frequency vibrations then you must you must practice metacognition you must think about what you're thinking about you know and it gets to a point again it's a practice just like meditation it gets to a point where you can get so deep in your own thoughts where you just like i mean <laughs> One of my pastimes, people ask me, like, what do you love to do? I love to think. I love to think about what I'm thinking about. I love to think about something, put an intention, throw it out in the quantum, see how quickly I can create it. Like, that's fun for me. Absolutely fun for me, right? So now let's look at these last four key points here. And then we'll wrap up for today and we'll continue on tomorrow. <clears throat> but let's look at these four key points. It says uh, the key points in, in, in getting into the driver's seat or the creator seat of this, this um, archetype or this world that you want to create for yourself. Number one, empowering our energetic container of self. What does that mean? Well, that means that you have to give life to to your energy the thing that is that is 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 encasing you your energy your spirit your being your energetic body all of that it's all saying the same thing right that electromagnetic field we talked about that a couple of days ago that electromagnetic field that is around you it has to be positive it has to be a high vibration right so you have to get rid of the whoa it's me type of mentality right you have to realize that you're a divine spark you are a star seed you are unique you are one in a gazillion right you are a perfect being just the way that you are and you have to start affirming these things about yourself so that you can increase your frequency you can increase your electromagnetic field around you so that now you can start, you know, tapping into the quantum, start attracting, you know, people that are on those same frequencies and experiences and so forth and so on. So that's what empowering our energetic container of self. That's what that's all about. And then two, relaxing the body mind component. What does that mean? That's nothing more than meditation, right? So when you get into a relaxed state, when you get your body relaxed, you don't have to be a perfect monk sitting in a lotus position to work with the energies that are around you and work with your own energy that's internal. So just getting yourself in a relaxed state, in a, in a, in a very peaceful state where your mind is relaxed, your body is relaxed, and you are focusing on these self-empowering thoughts about you increases your electromagnetic field around you. That's number two. And then three says those which clean up distortions in the reality loop that we've been describing. All right. 
So, you know, a lot of times we'll go into situations and we'll meet people and we'll go into experiences and we have all these preconceived notions about what's going to take place. Right? So that's a distorted reality loop because you're not being present. You're depending upon what has happened in the past, your past experiences, blase, blase, blase. You're not going into it open with an open mind and, 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 and putting your intention on what you want to happen in the next two seconds, right? Again, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of us having an imagination, being able to create. We can create whatever we want, whatever scenario we want, all right? So practice present moment awareness. This is why when I start the podcast shows, every single time that I remember, I'm getting better at remembering, is we take some deep breaths to get into the present moment. What's the point of you coming to this podcast show and you bringing all your baggage, all your negativity, all of your stress into this? It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you, right? So you leave your baggage. You know, my, my, my point in us taking deep breaths together is you leave your baggage, leave all that stuff. You can always go back to it. You can pick up all that crap whenever you want to when we're done, right? Or you can decide to just leave it, right? And continue, continue to go into the present moment, each moment, and go into the present moment, each moment. That's, 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 that's magical, all right? And then the last uh, point here is the visualization or intention process, which activates the probability component of the quantum collapse of waveform into particle form reality. So basically what it's saying is what you're visualizing and you're putting your intention on and what you want to manifest and show up in this dimension. If you focus on that thing where your attention goes, the energy flows. Where your attention goes, the energy flows. So you literally have the keys to the queendom or the keys to the kingdom. Now that you have this information, you can no longer sit and say that you're just a subject in this world and things are just happening to you and you have no control. The only person that would say that after we've gone through this information is a person that's just lazy and doesn't want to take responsibility and doesn't want the um, really the blessing to be able to create their day, their week, their month, their year, their entire life any way that they see fit. So I hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode. I look forward to us continuing with this. And um, I will talk with you on tomorrow. If you've got questions or comments, you can leave those questions or comments um, either on the YouTube video or you can leave them on the blog at thequeendome.com, thequeendome.com. And if you're listening to the podcast uh, via iTunes or other podcast channels, uh, leave me a comment over there. Give me a a good rating if you if you like the show um, I'd love to see some uh, comments and, and ratings as well all right so with that being said uh, I wish you a great day peace and unconditional love thank you for tuning in please like share and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes if you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level Book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.